last time on Pokemon Fire Red. We finished up with Cinnabar Island at the Cinnabar Gym, but then Bill came out of nowhere, and now we're here on the Sevi Islands. Now, if your only experience with this gen is the original Red and Blue, uh, you probably don't remember this at all, because it wasn't in the originals. What are you talking about? It was totally in the originals. My uncle works in Nintendo. He, he developed this part. <laughs> Well, it was originally intended to be in the originals, but I think they ran out of either time or budget, and then they ended up not being able to put it in the game. So it just wasn't. And if you're wondering why this seems so sudden, that's probably the reason. They put it back, and they didn't really have a good point to put it in, so it's here now. I actually didn't know it was supposed to be in the original, I was just being a jackass. <laughs> Yeah, it was originally planned for, probably not like, all of Sevi Islands, because if you could guess from the name Sevi Islands, there's actually a fair few of these islands. I'm guessing not all of them were originally supposed to be in, but this general area. It's weird that the name is based on uh, Hawaii, with the two eyes at the end, because now there's an actual Pokemon Hawaii. Yep, it, it's Alola, so this is just... I don't know. It's been displaced from the actual world. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a second suspiciously similar Hawaii. Much like the fighting dojo getting kicked out of the Pokemon League by the Psychic-type gym, this has been kicked out of its position as a real-world location by Alola. In this world, the Hawaiians were never annexed by the US because they built a second archipelago and fooled the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> like in Blazing Saddles. <laughs> Good plan. Shame it would have been too costly IRL. So, we do actually have a separate map for the Sevi Islands. Just wanted to show that off. And we also have this extra large uh, Pokemon Center, because that big computer needs to fit in there. Now, if you aren't like me, and you didn't shuffle around your Pokemon before you actually came here like I sneakily did, uh, you can't use that PC, but don't worry too much about not being able to access your Pokémon, there is a solution to that. If you don't know about said solution, though, um, I hope you got a good set of Pokémon for one island, because if you want to tackle this first, you're kinda gonna need a good set of Pokémon. Alright, so, one island here is fairly peaceful. As this man says, it's right smack in the middle of nowhere, but there is a nerd on the island. Uh oh no. So yeah, Celio here is apparently quite popular. He's currently trying to reach another region, so we want to help him with that. Oh, uh, one island is also called Not Islands, just FYI. Doesn't matter too much, but hey, if you don't want to call it One Island, there's another name. Now, in addition to the stuff to our east, uh, you might notice the water here is surfable. There's an optional location down here called Treasure Beach. We're not going there though, because first we got a battle. Alright, Amara, let's see what you got. You got a seal. It's a pretty high level seal. Despite being two levels higher and having a super effective move, seal barely did anything. Did however decide to take a nap in the middle of the sea, in the middle of a fight. <laughs> There's just something about the fact that it doesn't have like a closed eye animation but it is sleeping. <laughs> it's really goofy. Seal's just sleeping with her eyes open. Eevee Mama, you're too strong. You're too strong and too fast. <laughs> you already have so many hundred stats. Everyone, please stop praying for Eevee Mama. He's too powerful. Alright, so here we are on the actual treasure beach. Tell me about it. 
So yes, there are a whole lot of hidden items on this beach, and I believe they even respawn. So, true to its name, it's actually a pretty good place to pick up items, except for the fact that it's a pain to find hidden items in Gen 3. Uh... Let me tell you, uh, at the time of recording this, uh, Pokemon Sword just came out the other week, and man, I do really miss items just sparkling, like, visibly. Yeah. I guess in the 3D games it's less obvious, so they can get away with it, whereas if they sparkled here it would be really obvious where they were. Yeah, pretty much. But also, not huge on doing this. And believe me, I edited this heavily. <laughs> You can get some decent items from this, at least, like, hey, Ultra Ball, that's pretty good, right? Also, you may have noticed, but I did cut out a whole lot of Pokemon fights. can't really find anything in particular here that you can't find in any other locations in Kanto, so no real need to show them off. At this point, it would be less tedious to just press A over every single tile on this map. Yeah, then you wouldn't have to hear every few seconds. I don't think the item finder is really that accurate. <laughs> At the very least, and it's like, hard to read. Why does it have a text box? Just have it do the arrows. But then you might get confused. Oh hey, Terry, how's it going? Hey, you're still not really a viable Pokemon. So yeah, uh, Tangela we didn't find before we left for the Sevi Islands, but we'd be able to find a Tangela pretty much afterwards. Actually, technically, we could have found a Tangle a while ago, but details, details. I forget, have I mentioned the uh, fan theory about Tangle? I think you might have? I can't remember if it was on the Let's Play, though. That um, they were initially created to be a, like a low-level grass type you could get early on. Because okay, they're I don't like, think you've mentioned this. they're close to Palatown, they're not very strong, but you only get them after getting seven badges. Yeah. <laughs> they accidentally put them in a bad spot. As a joke. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has any uh, water to it. I just think it's a neat idea. So anyway, here's Noodle. Noodles, sorry. Uh, yeah, don't, we don't want to get sued by the gorilla, by gorillas. Now we just want to acknowledge that noodles is the best, no doubt can't deny. Tastes better than water, but don't ask me why. It's been a while since I've recorded this, so I forget if there's just a point where I ran out of patience and just said, fuck it. <laughs> um... Hey, honey, can I ask you a personal question? No, but thank you for uh, asking beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess we haven't encountered a Persian yet. Here's Meowth, but better. I would have sworn we'd have fought one of these by now. I mean, like I said before, uh, Treasure Beach doesn't exactly have unique Pokémon, but apparently I've just been slacking when it comes to uh, my dex building. Hideki is going to make so much fun of me. Yeah, I don't think we've encountered Persians in the wild, so we haven't caught any. And now that's fixed. Also, I really phoned it in for this one. <laughs> <laughs> can. Yeah, you know, can, because, you know, canned food for cats. 
Anyway, we're done here. So based on Persian's name, does Persia exist in the Pokemon world? I mean, it might have, but 26 years from now, when we get Pokemon Persia, <laughs> then we'll have to completely change Persian's name. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, yeah, that was Treasure Beach. Uh, pretty good for item or money grinding items, but otherwise really kind of annoying to deal with, so not super worth it. Uh, so with that done, we can move on to Kindle Road. This is a relatively long route, and it leads to a dungeon, so if you're wondering why this video is so long, that's why. At least it's because of the dungeon. I was worried it was going to be because of treasure hunting. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> no, thankfully, even treasure hunting couldn't last that long. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, what percentage of this is treasure hunting? You have to answer honestly. A painful amount as it is, so thankfully it's not 50 minutes worth. Oh, this duck is screaming at us. <laughs> we flew up too high and now it can't scream at us anymore. Good. It, it's useless. It's just a duck shouting at a cloud at that point. Just sounds more and more like Donald Duck as we fly up. <laughs> I'd also like to point out that this is a uh, unique swimmer sprite. Well, not unique, but uh, I don't think we see any of those swimmers in Kanto. Uh, they don't have a unique in battle sprite, though. It's just their overworld one. Well, do we ever encounter a swimmer out of the water? Uh, well, I mean... Just judging by the hair, uh, they are definitely different, because the overworld ones oh. normally have green hair, but this has, like, uh, red sort of short hair. Oh, I didn't think about that. But yeah, I do wish they had different, like, in-battle uh, designs, because I actually really like their overworld designs. Should we come to think of it... I guess it looks sort of like the uh, swimmer sprite from Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. So, I guess they must have just... Reused the overworld sprite. I think it's a different color palette, but design wise, it looks the same. <laughs> this Pikachu's getting real fast. Gotta go fast. Oh god. Didn't save ya. <laughs> I like to picture it was just jogging in place until Gato burst out of the ground, killing it instantly. <laughs> Sure, you can from the underground. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Fire Blast is pretty powerful. Got that new move. Not a lot of PP, but, like, that wasn't even super effective. Still did a lot of damage. Okay, so, shame I don't have Rock Smash. I think. Yeah, no, I don't have. Do I? <laughs> Darn it, now I need to look at my <laughs> Pokemon again. <laughs> Alright, take that, Bryce. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, Spaghetti is here with us. have a crush girl. I forget if we've seen any of them on their own if, or if we've only seen them in uh, double battles with black belts. Either way, here's a solo one here now. I think this is the first time we've seen a solo one because I don't remember them being called crush girls. Mm -hmm. I remember them being called battle girls. Out of all of the punches you possibly could have had, you had fire punch. Two of your three punches. There you go. See? Ice punch. You got it. That's gonna do the damage, except it won't. <laughs> if Aurora Beam isn't going to do much of anything, what good do you think Ice Punch is going to? You're a generation too soon to be using that against me. <laughs>
Alright, so... Switch it up. Thankfully, I just know what Pokemon this guy has. I mean, granted, even without a guide, I think I could guess, <laughs> but... This dude's just super screwed. Everything stacked against him. It sends out a sand slash. <laughs> ah, damn it, this is suddenly a randomizer. <laughs> it turns out I was actually playing a randomizer all along. It just got so randomized that most of the game was actually the same up until specifically this point. <laughs> I like Pokemon randomizers in theory, but in practice they're always a little too unwieldy. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, it's very hard to balance that sort of thing. Yeah. Like, this might make some Pokemon you would never use super viable. Or you just hope that you get, you know, a Dratini in the first 10 seconds or something. Uh, woe to you if you're playing a Nuzlocke randomizer. Because that's the point at which you're just praying to Arceus that at least a few things go your way. My dude, I literally cannot swim. I need my big turtle, otherwise I will perish. And all that for Max Repel. Alright, and as said before, we have seen these guys in pairs where they're the Crushkin, the weird cousin of Snuffkin. <laughs> the Crushkin is what Moomin has. What's up, the name's Crushkin. I'm here to destroy capitalism and also make it to the top of Lucha Libre. <laughs> I'm all about gains, but you know what I'm not about? Capital gains. <laughs> The only merger I'm concerned about is merging some protein with my body. Let's go. You're gonna do one pull-up for every million dollars Jeff Bezos has, and then I'll be strong enough to kill him with my bare hands. My god. <laughs> Who could possibly beat a Machoke? It's impossible. Alright, so let's uh, deliberately put myself in harm's way by challenging this black belt and then being in the precise position I need to be to be p attacked by another one a second after this fight. Hey, you picking on my little brother? <laughs> oh god, I'm not wearing your shirt. Why are you making it so cold? <laughs> I'm prepared for a lot of things, but I'm not prepared for the weather. I'll symbolically defeat you with the technique I taught my brother. Well darn. Turns out that was a bad move uh, to use against a high HP Pokemon. I knew I should have used Thunder Punch. Is it really that frivolous? This is a pretty simple outfit. It's like a fucking blue tank top, a bag. Yeah, it Come on. seems pretty practical. It's not like... You've got pink frills or anything. Hey, what the hell? You beat up my little brother! <laughs> no, this is the one that hates his little brother. <laughs> oh, good, I'm sick of that brat. I'm only here for Derek, the other Machoke, training with that guy over there. <laughs> we're bros, hanging out with different Pokemon trainers because we're not gay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you attacked me first. Now, Granted, I did position myself specifically so you would go after me, but I fail to see how that's my fault. So anyway, 
I'm pretty tired out from all those fights, but I don't want to go back to the Pokemon Center. But it's a good thing, then, that we have the Ember Spa. Not only is it apparently good for our skin... Dope, oh, and apparently will just attract very strong old men. <laughs> Many strong old men. Oh, right did we now. not have Rock Smash until now? Fuck. I knew that all along. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so, talking to these guys doesn't matter, nor is the amount of time you spend in here, uh, nor does that matter. As this old man says, get in the middle. And that is how you heal. So yeah, this is a nice uh, midway refresher. Which, again, I desperately needed. <laughs> My bird got punched a whole lot, and even though he's not particularly weak to it, wasn't doing too good. Alright, you kick my ass right now. Now, you might be wondering, why am I still using Turtle Misu if Turtle Misu's so overleveled? After all, I'm trying to avoid using Eevee Mame for that very reason. Well, there is actually something specific that I would like Turtle Misu in top shape for, uh, that isn't on this island, but uh, is in the Sevi Island, so we'll be seeing that soon. For now, I'll have to make do with just tossing an ape to the sea. Alright, I think we only have a couple more swimmers left before the dungeon. So, we dive right in. Definitely don't get into a random encounter, what are you talking about? Seamless we will fight this man. <laughs> yeah, I love <laughs> the ocean. It's so easy to edit around. It's great. <laughs> anyway, here's a fucking Starmie. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not like it was in the old days when we fought Misty. We are very much prepared for this Starmie. It rose from the depths of the sea, and I'm just like, nah. We do not need to know Thunder Wave. Don't you feel like a big, powerful trainer using type advantages? Oh, you just smote me. Good for you. Alright, Maria's into blue skies into battle. Okay. Here's a Cedra. And that's that. Hold up a sec, you're actively fucking up my job! Ooh. God, see King's fright. <laughs> I don't fucking know what I'm doing. He was told he was going to be involved in the battle ten seconds before this picture was taken. Oh god, oh god. Back to the sea with me. Oh god, I saw what you did to the last guy. I'm not ready either. I don't even have my shoes on! Oh no, my accuracy! I love my accuracy! <laughs> <laughs> Crit flail! <laughs> <laughs> the most powerful move we've seen in this fight yet. He's just, just ready to go home! <laughs> what even is that power? It's a secret! I don't like that! 
You know, from my end, I just see the words, you cannot grasp the true form of Spearman's attack. Like, that's fucked up, am I right? <laughs> Part of me wishes the Seeking just one hey KO'd you with, like, horn attack. <laughs> or drill horn, or whatever it's called. Well, we've just ruined that man's entire day. Goodbye! Take me away, large turtle. <laughs> Play me out, turtle misu. <laughs> Alright, so, we're done with Kindle Road, which means we can move on to Mount Ember, the big volcano that everybody's been talking about. <laughs> you know, we could all be killed by a volcano. Anyway, <laughs> do you want me to teach you how to make your Pokemon explode? <laughs> I don't fear death. I face death every day. Uh, so, here are some Team Rocket members whispering to one another, but they won't fight us. Oh well, that's fine. Alright, Spaghetti. Use strength. Oh hey, look, there's a Picnicker over there. Yep, a Picnicker. Let's go ruin her day as well. Let's see, just gonna just gonna have Char take the lead. Just waltz on over. Alright, so it's time for a fight with Surprise, idiot! It's actually a Pokemon Ranger! <laughs> they just have the same overworld sprites as the Picnickers. Now, I think they have like a similar Pokemon set, but of course. They tend to be higher leveled than your average picnicker. Of course, grass types aren't much in the face of Char, but you know, that's just Char. Yeah. Did you ever play the Pokemon Ranger spinoff? I have not. There's like three of them, right? I think. There's at least two. I only played the first one. I liked it. I didn't think the others were bad. It was just like a timing issue, I think. Yeah, there were just a whole bunch of them back in, like, I think the time period between, like, the Diamond Pearl games and the Black and White games, just, like, around that time. Yeah, because that was around the time I was getting out of Pokemon, temporarily. I do not know what any of the Pokemon Ranger games are about, though. I barely remember the first one. They were pretty interesting. I like the idea of them temporarily, like using Pokemon rather than capturing them permanently. That does seem pretty neat. They were used for like puzzle solving aspects, which sounds cool, but kind of just means that like, alright, you gotta draw a bunch of circles around this Pokemon to get past this broken bridge. Alright, so probably would have been a better series if it weren't made in the DS era then. Well, without that, there's nothing. Like, without the circles... Without the circles, there's, like, no skill involved. It's just here a bunch of locked doors, but the keys are shaped like Pokémon. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to note that I do like uh, both the Pokémon Ranger sprites. They are very good. The female sprite is super cute, and we'll probably see the male one as well. Yeah, see that camper what over that there? Him? It's probably not a camper. That crush girl, however, will continue being a crush girl, so... Time for bird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through a bad breakup, but now my muscles are bulging. I'm here to kick your ass. <laughs> I've been trained to help me emotionally. It didn't work, but now I can crush a man's head with my bare hands. <laughs> you win some, you lose some, I guess. Anyway, there's Sky Uppercut. That's a pretty unique move, right? <laughs> I just got Shoryuken. <laughs> Here's a Hitmonchan that's actually kicking ass. Jesus. God, those moves are, like, never useful to me, because I only really do the single-player stuff, and the other trainers don't use Fly. Yeah, so, you know, 
I don't think you see that many more strategies in the Sevi Islands, but like, you know, that's a pretty good move. I'll give him that. Thankfully, or at least hopefully, uh, the emphasis on Sky Uppercut means that maybe this Hitmonchan won't have Thunder Punch. <laughs> well, I really maybe hope it, it does, doesn't. maybe it doesn't. It just decided to use the less useful one. I mean, the burn sucks, and I'm surprised that procced, but like, you know, it's, it's not Thunder Punch. The residual flames left over are doing more damage than the actual fire. Yeah. <laughs> So, I'm guessing probably doesn't have Thunder Punch if it's really going for the Fire Punch. It really wanted that. I don't know why. I think I tried to overdo it, like when I sent my Hitmonchan to the sky to punch your bird. Anyway, so I got this when I tried to leave for editing. Here's Rapidash. As you can see, I was caught vaguely unawares. <laughs> uh, this is the closest to a screw-up you'll ever let into one of your videos, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, there was, um... Oh, shoot. I think it was Clefairy back at Mount Moon. I had the same situation. I'm just like, alright, time to go heal. Oh, fuck, there's a new Pokemon that I probably won't run into again. Guess I gotta show this. <laughs> Alright, now, time to use Toxic and give this battle a very specific time limit. You got your poisons, you got your leftovers, you got your fire spin, you got it all! <laughs> Let's make this random battle last for eternity. Or maybe we'll just end it here to end the headache. So anyway, if you need a fire type, that's a level 39 Rapidash, so if you get this lucky, there you go. <laughs> Jesus. Just imagine you're riding your train, and a terrifying fire horse is just running alongside you. I had to misspell Wintergreen, but if I remember correctly, I looked up Kentucky Derby horse names to try and find inspiration. <laughs> Not as many food named uh, horses as you would think. So anyway, here's Lesser Rapidash. Yeah, uh, the horse names are dumb, but usually not food related. Maybe next time in Heart Gold, I'll just name all of my Pokemon after Kentucky Derby horses. <laughs> No, wait, that'll be the black and white gimmick. Yeah. That's where they uh, introduced your mask, right? Yes. Because right, the only Kentucky Derby horse I can remember is named American Pharaoh. <laughs> Which, coincidentally, sounds like it could be a stand name. <laughs> yeah, actually, why isn't there a band called American Pharaoh? What the fuck, bands as a concept? You're really slacking. You're getting shown up by a horse. All of you are slacking. Just, you know, the concept of like, uh, when something bad happens, nobody will call 911 because you expect everybody else to do so. That's the same situation <laughs> here, but with band names. <laughs> the the by bander effect. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. You get it. Anyway, here's the male Pokemon Ranger Sprite. Not quite as good, but still cool. I think I like the uh, color scheme of their outfits. Orange and black is pretty solid, can't really go wrong with that. As demonstrated by Char here. <laughs> I love that Executor's just got a pep in his step. <laughs> he him, is making the big steppy. Give him the old razzle. They did not, however, have time for a dazzle. Okay then. Well, 
Not going to question that any further. <laughs> Hi, I've known you for ten seconds. Please chill. <laughs> Coming on awfully strong, bucko. Alright, so I've got this passage here, which actually has a new Pokemon. Well, we've seen Machoke before, but we couldn't catch Machoke before. Would have had a Machoke by now if I actually used the uh, line, but I'm not. I don't think I've ever really used the uh, this particular line. Machops just never really appealed to me. The weird child. Yeah, I never used the um, the trading Pokemon, even though I had younger brother growing up. I totally could have. Its formidable body never gets tired. Many strong Machoke await you. Your beef! <laughs> there has to be an MGS5 that just adds beef as a soldier name, right? Ah, uh, I wish. Either replacing the nouns or the adjectives, I don't really care which. Despite everything, beef is still like one of my favorite of the MGS portable jokes from Chip Chisholm. Peace Walker. Peace Walker, right. He very decidedly refused to do portable ops. Alright, the game's a the other game's called Portable Ops. I forgot it existed. I called it portable because I was like, that and the card game is are the only portable ones, right? <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, don't you wish, but I don't think Portable Ops is that bad. It's, like, worse than Peace Walker, but it's worse kind of in the way that, like, Pokemon Red and Blue is worse than Gold and Silver. Yeah. But of course it's worse. It came first. What do you want? So, anyway, uh, just healing up real quick, because um, there's just a fiery godbird in front of us. Just uh, figure I should have everybody up and ready for this. Yow! Alright, and so, we went from 1 to 3, because now we're at Moltres! So, as you might expect, uh, Moltres wasn't here in red and blue, because here didn't exist. So, Moltres actually got an upgrade, because they got their own specific islands now. It's gonna be canon to Pokemon 2000. Yep, so thankfully, Moltres decided to endure a hit, which really made it a lot safer to try and catch him. And so, let's see how many balls it's gonna take to capture Moltres. Because let me tell you, it's not gonna be like Articuno. <laughs> I don't think this one was that bad either, because yeah, I'm only at 44 now, so it didn't take me too long to get to Moltres, and Turtle Misu can endure a lot of hits, you know, given Moltres is a fire type. Still was not the cinch that Articuno managed to be. I just seem to have a lot of luck with Articuno, because in this game I caught it quickly. In Pokemon Go I got a shiny Articuno. <laughs> So, anyway, yeah, here's Moltres. Their name is Stove. <laughs> because I have no respect for Moltres. <laughs> what a nerd. Fear the flaming chicken. Alright, and with that, we can... not escape from Mount Ember entirely, but Spearmint can take us the rest of the way. Thank you, Spearmint. So, as you might have guessed, uh, that was just a detour. Because uh, we didn't do anything related to Celio's quest. We kind of just went out of our way for a legendary. So, um... Eh, I've got no regrets. We caught a Fiery Godbird. That's pretty good. So, next time on Pokemon Fire Red, maybe we will actually be helpful. You know, next time around. Second chances and all that.